Are, are we ready? Can we start now? We're ready. Hi, I'm Kelly Osborne and I am joined by my best friend Jeff Beecher. Welcome to the Kelly Osborne and Jeff Beecher podcast. This is our first ever show. I know, aren't I supposed to say, and I'm Jeff Beecher? Isn't that the- well, I'm reading the script that um, you put together, so okay, maybe you right. should <laughs> fix that. That was Kelly Osborne, my best friend, and I'm Jeff Beecher. Hey, uh, Kel. Welcome to our very first podcast. I just want to give you guys a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a story. Our for- first podcast had already been recorded. And then I had a little slip and none of it made sense anymore. So today we have come together to re-record our first podcast so that we can just get it all out in the open. And we have the most incredible guest and somebody who is so important to me and my recovery. His name is Mike Bear. I want you to tell everybody what it is you do because I don't think I could do it justice. Oh, well, thanks, Kelly. And it's so good when things come full circle. Isn't I mean, it just? With all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Beecher for years, and I met Kelly, gosh, how long ago was that? I was 24. How old are you now? I'm 36. 12 years ago yes. it was. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I get a phone call. Well, so I've been working in treatment now for over 18 years. I have a treatment center. I've written books. I'm on Dr. Phil's advisory board. I mean, not to mention any names, the, the number one treatment guy in the world probably right it, it, and dealt with dozens of a-list definitely stars. let's just go definitely america and canada we'll give you that for sure thank you and i look like the guy next door <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know>. yeah. <laughs> but yeah so i've been in treatment a while back then i guess i'd been working in treatment about five years and i got a phone call and <laughs> i you know, the phone call was from someone who said that there was a, a famous family who had a daughter who was struggling. And then I came to find out it was the Osbournes and that uh, they were wanting help with Kelly. <laughs> and it was kind of surreal because back then I, I hadn't worked with a lot of Hollywood families. I grew up in Orange County. Uh, like I couldn't really afford a lot. Well, this is a little before like borrowing my dad's suit. I worked for a company. You had to work. Bring, I remember the clipboard. Yeah. No, I remember you and your clipboard. And I think I even said something about you and your fucking clipboard or whatever you it did. was. You did. Oh, yeah, that clipboard. Because I should have framed it afterwards. But basically, I was pretty excited. You know, the Osbournes were a big show. I thought it was, wow, Kelly, I'm really a fan of her, like her being on television. I sat down with her parents. And they were living in like... Calabasas or something? Yeah, they were in Woodland Hills. Woodland Hills. Time. Yeah. And uh, they had described Kelly, who you, who I hadn't met before, and uh-huh. said she was very feisty. And, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> would definitely put up a, a bit of a fight. That was a huge understatement. <laughs> I went insane. No, like not you, Kelly Osborne. I called the police on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did, didn't you? Yeah. I thought I called the police on you. No, I called, you called the it police on me on to get you. me out of your house. Yeah. That's so right. So I sit down with Ozzy and Sharon <laughs> and Jack, and we do a pre-intervention, and then we do the intervention to sit down with Kelly, and we go to your house. And I remember. I mean, it's definitely top five most difficult yeah and i and i can I just say that i wear that proudly because of the full circle that has come since then like i was horrible like so horrible and so cutting and, and like, mean mean because i did not want to be sober and i was not happy and i hated myself and they were going to take my security blanket away from me and i remember in that i was like i was like, I think that was probably the meanest I've ever been in my life. I felt ever. emotionally hungover for like yeah. three days after. She called me a star fucker so many times. <laughs> and at the time, 
I didn't like. I didn't even. I mean, Mike, think, is, is she that far off? Yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't. That wasn't my thing. Like I wasn't. It wasn't. I did just. Remember, I wasn't trying to make it in Hollywood. Like, I even I, remember. I think that you were wearing a green polo shirt that was tucked into your trousers, and you were there with your clipboard, and you were so <laughs> nervous. And I was like, I know what kind of addict you are. You're one of those meth heads. You don't get me. And I was like going insane at him. Like te- I was horrible like the worst i actually called the police on him to get him out of my house and i stayed yeah because i was i also am like you know being an ex-addict and also being like i don't care like let's go to war like i was ready to go to war too she was as well i remember i had to sit in your backyard because i got kicked out of the house (laughs) and but she got in the car that day I did. She got in the car and then she tried to kick out the windows, according to Heather, who <laughs> transported you, said you kept banging the windows and she had to stop the car and be I like, really wish no I was a, a flying on the car. Oh, yeah. I was, I was trying one. to break out of the car and jump out on the freeway, all that kind of stuff. Like, I, I was that girl. Like, the typical, like, when you see Intervention, the show on TV, like, that was me. Like, 100%. I can't say any names. I was in a fun one. You know, the one, remember the one I was in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was like, whoa. It was like Hollywood. That was it crazy. Was, it, but, like, I was that girl when they were, like, reading the letters that they had all written about how they felt about me. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit what you have to say. Shove that letter. Let me use that and wipe my ass with it. Like, I was not having a word of it. But the little voice inside my head was like, they're right. They're really mm. right. Like, I don't really want to be like this anymore. I just don't know how to stop because I don't know how to be human. And so I remember I packed the suitcase. I still have that suitcase, you know. And I I went to Hazelden Springbrook in... I'm uh, glad you have I, the suitcase. <laughs> in, <laughs> that was an important fact. I don't know why, because it was like this one thing of like, I'm about to pack everything I knew that was me into this bag and I will come out being someone else, hopefully. So I go to treatment. I was, I wasn't ready to be sober yet, but I tried and I learned a lot and I learned a lot about addiction from them. And I did stay sober for a little bit. I really did. Mm. Didn't get a full year or anything like that. I don't even think I could get 60 days at a time without relapsing. I would steal 60 day chips and then take them to my mom and say, look what I did. Cause I was like such a fucking psycho that I thought that that would be like, make my mom proud of me. But I was still smoking pot. And I did that for, until I discovered Adderall and I was like, oh, I can lose weight if I do this and I don't have to do anything. And mm. then that turned me into a psycho. At one point I was taking 90 milligrams of Adderall to wake up in the morning with two bottles of champagne and my friends knew I was awake because they could hear the bottle pop. And it was just this like... How many that? How many pills is that on ND? So that's three 30 milligram pills or nine 10 milligram pills. So wow. yeah, that's what I was doing. And that was just for the morning. Who needs a change of scenery right now, Jeffrey? Cal, I think everyone in the world needs a little change of scenery right now. It's so good that Apartments.com has the most listings anywhere. We're not just talking about apartments, but houses, townhouses, condos, and all manner of uh, dimensions that you can live in and all ways to stay cozy. No, they, they have everything. I mean, like the little tiny ones to like the huge mansions, like, you know, they have everything on there. And, you know, with their virtual 3D tours, you can literally go anywhere in the world. And see- I have friends that use those tours and never even stepped foot into their apartments until move-in day. And the apartments ended up being better than they even thought. I use the tour to look at Florida look at the buildings I wanted to look at. It's really an amazing, amazing site, apartments.com. So if you're looking for an apartment, go to apartments.com, the most popular place to find a place. So whatever else I got myself into later on in the day was like... But you know what's, what's interesting about you is, whereas a lot of people, especially in the public eye or grew up in Hollywood, they, they don't seem to turn a corner and come back to sobriety like they'll try it they'll try it for 60 days or 90 days they'll relapse several times and then they just become well sobriety just doesn't work for me and it's interesting that like you haven't given up on yourself no I'm never going to because sobriety is the right thing for me it is the way that I am a better person not just to myself but to everyone around me and 
I love the program because it holds me accountable. I was never held accountable as a child. I came from a crazy family. It was all just what we had to do to just show each other how much we love each other and survive. It was different, you know? Yeah. So for me, I need that accountability. So that's why, like, as soon as I realized just where I was in this relapse that just happened, I was like, nope, not doing this. I went straight, before I even called my therapist, I went and did the thing on Instagram where I came clean about everything because I need that accountability. I need everybody to know where I'm mm. at so that they can check me. I, I need that. Because I'm the girl that as soon as everything starts going great, I'm suddenly normal and can do what everyone else can. And I can't. Mm. And I always used to think that my drug of choice was pills and alcohol, uh, but uh, pills and like opiates. Mm. It's fucking not. It's booze. Yeah. It's booze through and through and through. Like this past week, I've woken up in a cold sweat every single night thinking that I've, I've drank. Because I'm so scared that I've done it again. How and long I, you been sober now? It's only a, just over a week. Did you know she was using, Jeff? Yes, he did. How did you know she was using her at what point? I mean, you know, she she wasn't like using, like drinking, like like doing like funnel shots. Like she would have like a glass of wine or uh, one of those, one of the things you're drinking. The here? White Claws. The White Claws. And like, you know, with Kelly and I, like I don't judge her and I didn't want to be like, Kelly, you know, because you know, I knew it would just create a fight and like, not that I wanted to not create a fight. I just didn't. The way she's dealt with me and my addiction issues in the past is let me go through my cycle. It <laughs> brings it up when. Yeah, didn't I have someone show up and drug test you once? Yeah. Yeah, well, that was I was drugged. Dr you thought you were drugged? No, no, I was drugged. I ate a bag of weed cookies. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I had someone show up, <laughs> beat your call me, and goes, <laughs> I don't. I don't even remember. No, it, no, no. I'll tell you the story. So we were going, we were doing those, 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 uh, those, the speeches, those class, you know, before that person went on tour and then you're like, come on, let's come over, let's rehearse the speeches. And I was like, all right, cool. And then I was like, listen, I don't feel good. And you're like, bitch, stop being a puss. Just get over here and like, let's do it. So we get there and like, I just look dead. I ate a bag of weed cookies. I don't smoke weed. And, and for people who are listening right now, Jeff, he is... 1000% allergic to weed. It doesn't, like, he just, he throws up, he goes white, it doesn't, he gets paranoid, he's crying, and it takes like five days. I to come cry out for of, days. Like, like five one, days. One, to come one out accidental of it. gummy or brownie or something. Like, he, it just, like, so, it, and anyway. I just so, can I tell you why that is? Because out of any, all um, chemical substances, the only one that combines with your DNA is THC. So it has a different effect on every single person that has it. I can't even take CBD, like just CBD with no THC. It like makes you sleep for two days. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me just, let's just speed the story up. So, cause it's funny. So I get there and I'm like, Mike, I gotta just tell you something, man. Like I, I, you, you're Mr. Clean. You're Mr. No drugs. I, I ate a bag of wheat cookies last night. And he's like, this is hard. You look like a zombie. I'm like, I feel suicidal. I'm like, I've been crying for, for two days. Like, this is crazy. And he's like, all right. And he just blinks an eye and like someone drops off a drug test. And I was like, that's quick. And he's like, just pee in the cup. And I'm like, all right. And I pee in it. And then he rips his thing off right away. I'm like, I thought it was going to go for testing. He goes, yep, this weed. He's like, and there's <laughs> Xanax and Viking. And he's like, damn, these guys really drugged you. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> the Xanax and the Vicodin, that was willing from this point. <laughs> He's like, we'll talk another time about this feature. I was like, yeah. I was like, all right, all right, let's go on. Yeah, let's I was like, oh, I didn't know he was doing Vicodin and Benzos. <laughs> we'll get anyway. to Jeff's intervention later. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, I, I was saying that you, because there's different types of people. Mm -hmm. There's people who... Do something because getting sober is hard. It's horrible. It's, it's so hard. It's so hard. It gets, you have to change so many things in your life. You try to change your mindset. You're almost starting below normal. Yeah. Even with like, it's hard enough for someone who just I isn't. Think that's a great analogy. What's that? It's starting below normal because you got to like pull you gotta, back. You got to pull back. Yeah. You got to climb up. So the fact that you've made a decision to consistently keep coming back. And having the hum humility to do that and to talk about it, I applaud. Thank you I so applaud. much. Big you applause, know, big applause. With all my projects, my number one mission is always just striving to be myself. And when you visit European Wax Center, you get the best of the best. European Wax Center, certified wax specialists, 
are expertly trained in preparing, protecting, and pampering your skin. Bikini waxing is their particular specialty. They do over 7.5 million bikinis a year. Jeffrey, are you going to be getting a bikini wax this summer? I mean, now that I have my new body, I probably should be, Kelly. Can I give you a bikini wax this summer? I'd love that. The secret to their signature comfort wax, and they say comfort wax because it really is a comfort wax. It's a proprietary blend of beeswax sourced from Europe and other skin soothing ingredients that allow for easy hair removal for a less painful experience. And let me tell you, it is so much less painful. European Wax Center is so confident you'll love their services. They're offering all first-time guests their first wax free. How sick is that? That's exciting. Visit waxcenter.com and book your reservation today. Your first wax is free. You better hold my hand. This is scary, but I'm I'm doing it. I can't hold your hand. (laughs) Visit waxcenter.com and book your reservation today. You know what it is? It's that take away the fact that I'm Kelly Osborne because in the end of the day, no one really gives a shit about that. Hmm. Not even me. I'm human. And there are millions upon millions, maybe even billions at this point, of people who have an ism. And an ism to me is an addiction, whether it's food, drugs, alcohol, gambling, it's all the same thing. And it affects our brain differently. We think differently. My my brain and, and me is most comfortable. I was having this conversation with... Um, so I ha- it's weird. Like I have an English sponsor and I have an American sponsor. And so, but he's like our go-to guy for in London for everyone. His name's DJ Fat Tony, and he's just like a pinnacle of AA and NA in in UK. And he called me up, and and he's got this great way of turning everything into a way that I can laugh about it rather mm. than shame spiral, because that's where I'm comfortable too. And he's like, Kelly, I know you. He goes, You, I've known you for years. You're most comfortable being drunk and alone on a bench somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And I said, yeah, I am. That's where I'm most comfortable. And On a bench? Like, that's what they say. That's what they say, English thing. Like a park bench. Like, so it's like sitting by yourself in a park on a bench, shit-faced with no one. I'm like, yeah, that is where I'm most comfortable. I was never comfortable being like the, like, I I didn't do it to party. It wasn't about a party for me. I am the one that doesn't want to feel anything, doesn't want to know anything. It's all too much. And then it works both ways in the sense that when I get too happy, I self-destruct because I feel like I don't deserve it. And I think that those are the reasons why this time around I was like, nope, I'm going back to outpatient. I'm fixing this last bit because for some reason there is still an area here that I can't get to that's keeping me out. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't want to be a habitual relapser. I mean, my brother's got 18 years. Mm. And God bless Jack. Right. And he's been like, he's been like my rock through all of this. And it's just now starting again. It's weird that I feel like I'm in a better place now, only eight days into it than I was six months ago, almost four years into Mm. it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you kind of, you become dry, you drop off, you don't do the things that we need to do. And, and, and that's why it was so important that somebody who knows my history, such as yourself, Mike, came on today so that we could share our experience, strength and hope. And for people who were listening and the things that happened during the pandemic that like rocked our world. Yeah. And, and that you can have a relationship with someone that you once thought you hated. (laughs) You know, like I've texted Kelly through the years and it goes to show, you know, even, even during COVID, like people have gone in massive fights and, you know, never going to talk to people again, but it just goes to show that. No, it goes to show like when I say that I love Mike, I love you, Mike. Like you changed my life and you put up with me at my worst. Sorry. And and you oh, okay thanks and no, you so, thanks. sorry okay. you no but no seriously <laughs> vice versa but, yeah you probably me at my worst we're gonna get to you in a minute my friend <laughs> we don't have a time to, today's episode don't forget it's an, enter- <laughs> it's an, enter- Jeff, it's an entertainment back podcast in his sofa. it's an entertainment and, podcast we have to like you know tell the story and then move and on while to people are listening today I just want to remind you guys thank you so much we really do care about you guys because we wouldn't have a show without you so check us out on YouTube Spotify podcast one and wherever you find your podcast and of course our instagrams at kelly osborne and at jeff feature 
And what's yours, Mike? And at Coach Mike Bear. I think everyone knows that Coach Mike Bear. <laughs> Coach Mike Bear. <laughs> if you're a Dr. Phil fan, they know you anyway. They do, yeah. So what would you say, Mike, mm. to somebody who has relapsed during this pandemic? So the, the num- I mean, and I think this goes too with anyone who's, let's call it relapsed with their depression or their- Or let's say they had leg surgery. No, Jeff, that's not a relapse. You willingly kept taking those pills. <laughs> so I, I would say, you know, kind of the cornerstone is honesty. Like that is the number one step to change. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the, some of these are just very old, like. But honesty is the hardest thing it when is you're hard. an addict because you're ashamed of what it is you've done because you know that what you're doing is not what's best for you, but you just can't stop. Yeah, or you just don't want to be totally honest. You want to give yeah. bits and pieces. And so the number one step is to get honest with someone. Because when you get honest with someone, even if you don't want to change, there's relief. Mm-hmm. There's like a spiritual co- subconscious guilt, shame, relief that can go away just when you have a conversation with someone. And you tell them what it is that you actually really are doing. Correct. So that's the first step is find that one person. Heck, find an enabler even, but just have that conversation. Get it out of your lips to the other person because suddenly you're making it a reality. So I think that's really the first step is having that honest, Mm -hmm. tough conversation for yourself. And then the next is being open to possibilities, to any sort of change that could happen, to doing it differently. And that word for me is a really hard word, change. Change throws me. Cause I am, I've now put myself in all these new different therapies that I didn't do the first time mm. around. So I'm doing like cognitive therapy and somatic therapy and learning how to kind of retrain the way that my brain thinks. Mm. And it's weird little things that I've, I've been doing and that can really help like weird things like if you're late to something instead of saying i'm sorry i'm late say thank you so much for waiting for me Mm. that's a good one thank you you so much for waiting for me today in case anyone was wondering jeff is always late so we had to wait no 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 no. i've been on time and early the last couple podcasts but i was drunk it wasn't my fault Just so you know, those podcasts will never see the light of fucking day, ever. (laughs) They're in the vault. In the vault. No, they're like being destroyed. Imagine if all of the cleaning products in your home were all natural. Grove Collaborative is an online marketplace that delivers natural home beauty and personal care products directly to your door. Kelly, you know, they make it as easy as possible for people to make the switch to natural products. Which is so important. I know. And they carry all those brands that I love that I get at all my holistic supermarkets like Mrs. Myers. They also have their own like best-selling in-house product called Grove Made Products like uh, seedling tree-free paper towels, the Grove laundry detergent dispensers. It very cuts green. 80% it's a very green of the waste, which I think is so important. Making the switch to natural products has never been easier. For a limited time, when our listeners go to grove.co slash Kelly, you will get to choose a free gift with your first order of $30 or more. But you have to use our special code. Go to grove.co slash Kelly, get your exclusive offer. That's grove.co slash Kelly. You know, because I I was coming in thinking like no one knew that I was drunk. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it could be, it could be interesting to play some of that back at some point. Yeah. At some point later on, we're not too raw now. I got you. I got you. We will. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, and then it's getting willing, you know, I always, you know, it's the how of the program, honest, open, willing, and then I always think it's helpful to get a bit curious. Like, oh, there are, because life is so infinite. Mm-hmm. And, and recovery is a loose garment and you have to find your fit. <laughs> Mike, you know, yeah. you know what would be good to talk about? Not just the, the, the drug part. Is mm. I think with COVID especially, the mental. Mm-hmm. But know, that's what we're talking about. We're not just talking about drugs. We're saying recovery, which is. No, but I, I think a lot of people don't under, even understand that they're, they're dealing with a lot of mental stuff from COVID. Yeah, we Jeff and I realized that what we thought was a minor case of OCD was actually like a full blown 
like him like sometimes we couldn't be in the same room i was wearing hazmat suits and like it was crazy mm. it was it was bad. you had anxiety through the roof oh yeah, it, was, it was terrible like crying the whole thing yeah everyone's gone me, through he, real he would, big downers during covid you he would know? call me from his uh, infrared sauna because that's where he thought all the bacteria would be coming off of his body crying mm. yeah and th- there's a bit of a it t- there's a bit of, a, of an illusion right now that telehealth is as uh, you know as rewarding as in person, right? And there is benefits for certain people. At the treatment center, I found a treatment center over 15 years ago called Cast Centers. We did a study on people who showed up in person versus people who did online, and the people who showed up in person completed the program like 70% of the time. The people who were just doing it online showed up 25% of the time. And we also found that our census, the population of people that were with us, we used to run at about 60% chemical dependency. Now we're 75% mental health. And because addicts and alcoholics, if that's a struggle, they can go more underground today Mm -hmm. because there's less family get togethers. They're more isolated and they have an excuse. Thank you so much for saying that because that is the number one reason why I came clean about it because I know me and I know that I could have stayed underground for a really long Mm -hmm. time and no one would have known. Mm -hmm. Like no one would have known. And I just, I, I'm one of those people that can't live with a secret. My, my secrets take me out. My mm-hmm. shame takes me out. I have to be honest, mm. even if it's uncomfortable. And it's always uncomfortable. And that's why you're, you keep coming back, and that's why you haven't given up. And I, I believe growing up in the family you grew up in, in any family, yes, we're all human, but you grew up in a rock star family. <laughs> it is very easy for you to go, I grew up in a rock star family and this is just how I grew up <laughs> and this is what I can, a lot of people would, a lot of people would. So, I mean, that's why I, I bring it back me. to kudos <laughs> for you for trying, not giving up, going to therapy, being outspoken about it. I mean, I think that's so badass. Like I've had conversations with my dad about the stuff that I have done and like, you know, my drug log and all of that. And he looks at me and he's just like, I have no idea how you did that. Like I just, don't, I almost don't believe it, but I do because I had to pick up the pieces. But like how my smallest daughter ended up being wilder than me at times blows my mind. And I said, well, thank you for setting the marvelous example. Father. <laughs> 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 you know, but it, but it, it, I think it, that in itself was really hard for my dad. I think he blamed himself like it was his fault that mm. I was an addict. But that's just not how it goes Mm-mm. at all. Like, and it's not my fault that I'm an addict either. It's just uh, something that I have to live with. And, and there are some days I wake up and I'm like, I have the program. This has, this, I wish that everybody could have something like the program because for normies, they don't have anything to check mm. them, to make them be accountable, to take inventories of themselves, to apologize promptly when you feel that you've done something wrong. Like they, they, don't, they don't have a, a rule book for life. Yeah. We do. And we have people that check us when we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing in a loving and kind way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard to create a community of people that are like-minded. And that's the blessing of being you know, an alcoholic or an addict is you have the ability to be around people around the world, right? You can mm-hmm. show up for a meeting. And people who aren't but are struggling in life it's really hard to figure out what's that community that's going to create accountability mm-hmm. and honesty and change. I mean, for addicts and alcoholics, it can be life or death. Yeah. So I think for other people, sometimes it's like, well, this isn't really life or death. You know, it's not a big deal if I eat, let's say, a piece of cake mm-hmm. or a piece of pie or whatever it is. Whereas with drugs, it's like, you know, you're one drink or drug away from it being your last and last on earth. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, sometimes things get difficult, especially today. Is there something interfering with your happiness? Is it preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, don't worry. Isn't that right, Jeff? Yep. We're not alone, Cal. There's help. We're not alone. There is help out there. I can't tell you how valuable talk therapy has been for me during this pandemic. 
it's really, really helped me going to, going to their webpage, you know, betterhelp.com and just, you know, getting inside the therapist. Like I didn't even like the first couple of therapists I worked with and I found one I clicked with and it's been a game changer. Such a game changer. BetterHelp will access your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. One of the best things like to, to know that at any time of day, if you have a problem, if there's something that you need help with, they are just a click away. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. Our listeners get 10% off the first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com forward slash Osborne. That's betterhelp.com forward slash O-S-B-O-U-R-N-E. So it's uh and another thing that and um, i think on our next episode jeff and i are going to be talking about uh the surgery that we both had for weight loss is that once you've had that surgery with a lot of people alcohol affects you differently mm. so i was drinking like i had my regular stomach and it, oh god yeah Whenever it, I drink, I have, low, I have a little tiny belly now. If I drink like one drink, I'm like, woohoo. Yeah, it takes one drink and you are three sheets to the wind gone. Wow. Yeah. Like one drink. And I was like, I should have got this surgery earlier. It would have been a lot cheaper. But like at the same time, it's just like that, that you're like, fuck, like this isn't the same. And it scared me. Mm. I think that was also a reason why I came back so quickly <clears throat> as well is that I didn't do all the work I did get this surgery to start drinking so it will stretch my stomach out and I'll go back right to where I was. Like it, the, all of these things that I Fun put. Fun fact, we're starting a, uh, found what's in the process, it'll be done in a couple of weeks. We started a foundation where um, we're paying for stomach surgeries for people that can't afford it. Because a lot of the time insurance won't cover it and most people in this country don't have insurance and mm. it's so life-changing and not liking yourself in your own body is so debilitating. So we want to give that gift back. But and it's been really uh, empowering for both of you. Oh, my surgery. God. Oh, yeah. And you know what else it's really helped is that it cuts out the hormone that produces cravings in the mind. Yeah. And, so, here, and here's the other thing. Not to cut you off. Sorry, said Cal. Um, it it, it gives like people think, oh, you got the stomach surgery. That's what made you skinny. There's nothing to do no. with that. It gives you a year and a half about till your stomach grows back. But what it does is it gives you time to go get the therapy that made you. Because go back, going to your addictions, food oh, is just I another addiction. They made addiction. me do the therapy first. Yeah, but a lot of people don't do it. I didn't do it first. See, I had to do. I had to do the therapy first. They wouldn't let me do the surgery without being uh, yeah, well over a year sober therapy, yeah. and having a year of therapy mm. that was outside of treatment therapy. This was just food therapy, and I did all of it for a year before I went, so that I knew what I was getting into because you wake up and everything's different. Right. And that obsession with food is just gone. Wow. It's crazy. And like, I noticed that like my cravings for alcohol completely disappeared. My cravings for like weird things that I'd like be obsessed with, like a gummy bear, like all of Do you these. guys, like, let me ask you, because you both, you, I imagine you both like the way you look more. Yes. Well, as you said, I don't look older. <laughs> you definitely don't look older. <laughs> You don't. You look the same Thank as I you. saw you like, what, two years ago or so? Like three, probably, probably. three years ago. But my question is, do you feel like you see your... I know you feel better, but then do you feel like your sexiness is the same or do you feel like you're more sexy now for yourself? Um, I think that sexiness for me is confidence and I do feel more confident. More confident. So then I would definitely say that I feel more sexy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a little different. Like I... When I was morbidly obese, I just had blind. I was an animal. I just had so much confidence because I was like, I just leaning into. I was it. delusional, yeah. you know. And then when I lost the weight, it's like I have less confidence. It's it's a weird it's a weird transitional period for my brain. I mean, I'm, I have more confidence in work and in like life, but when you know it comes to like, yo, you look sexy, like. Like I like the people when I buy clothing, they're like you look fine. You're in the medium. I'm like, no, I need the extra large. So it's yeah. they're like you're fine in the medium beach. I'm like, no. I, so yeah, it's like it's a little weird. You mm. know, one thing that I really want to hit across as well, going back to the whole like relapse thing, is that re just because you relapsed, mm. it's not a failure. It's a part of your individual journey. And for a couple of days during the midst of all of the drinking. 
I was like, I'm a failure. I've, I'm a loser. I've lost mm. my time. Everybody's going to hate me. But the actual fact was that no one really cared <laughs> but me about that. They were worried about me because they loved me. But it was, I turned it into a bigger deal in my head than it was. And now actually, I know this sounds like weird to say, I'm almost grateful for the relapse because it put me back on track in an even better way. And I'm digging deeper and I'm mm -hmm. trying to fix the root of, of why, why I feel the need to numb myself. Well, I mean, you had four years, right? Mm -hmm. And so when, do you remember? Almost four years. Almost four, four years, yeah. almost four years. Do you remember the moment? What, I mean, everyone's different, but when you started to have, because we have over 30,000 thoughts a day, yeah. right? So whether like I move my arm here, I just, I'm, yeah. how I'm talking about 30,000 thoughts. So the majority of your thoughts up until that point were overwhelmingly, I'm going to stay sober. Yeah. I can't drink or use drugs. When or was there a moment, do you think, that you started to have like a change of script in your head? It was, it was gradual, it was little thoughts, like little seeds that were planted. And only in retrospect now did I realize that my mind knew that I was what going to relapse before. Yeah, like do you remember any moments where you're like, oh. I was on an airplane New Year's Eve and all these people were just like, would you like a glass of champagne with this? And I was like, oh, I could do that. Oh, but I've got to read my script, so I just didn't even focus on it. And it was like that first little thought. And then um, New Year's Eve happens, everyone's drinking champagne, blah, blah, blah. Then I am on the flight back, and I'm like, oh, no, this still seems like that would be fun. Didn't think about anything. It was, I went away somewhere with my friend, and people were by a pool, and they were drinking champagne. I was like... Look. Champagne, yeah. the champagne thing it's sucked you in. It's me. It's the sha it's she champagne. She loves that champagne. <laughs> that, no, but I'm saying it was, it was this like glam. It was it's this like fabulous cha champagne. And by, by the, the way, pool. we all. By the way, we all know having any sort of drink, whether it's diet coke or champagne on an airplane, it all sucks. Yeah. Anyway, it's yeah. the, the, the air feels weird. It's never that great, but no. like it became champagne. It was champagne, and it was like I'm gonna have a glass of that. Yeah. And I had a glass. I was fine. Walked away from it. Didn't have another At, one. By the pool? Mm -hmm. Didn't have another one again for a couple of weeks. Didn't even think about it. Didn't even think about it? No. You compartmentalized it. Yeah. I think it was like one of those things where I'm like, that never happened. And then I was out with my friends and I was like, I'm going to have a drink. I'm fine. I had two drinks. I was fine. Did you choose the friends that you had drinks with? No. These are all people who've only known me sober. And did they say anything? They, yeah, of course they did. What did they say? They're like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I think that I'm at a place in my life right now where I've done enough work. And I actually convinced these people that, because that's how deceitful and manipulative addicts are. I was like, that I'm normal. And they were like, oh, okay. Good for you. Good for you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, you've done so much so work, done Kelly. You've done so much work, Kelly. You've done so much work. Good for you. So like, I was like, okay. And then it started off just having like, from going from like one drink here, one drink there, to literally three bottles of champagne and 24 white claws a day. In, and that only lasted like five days. And then Are I we was getting like, paid by white claw? Well, they fucking should. <laughs> or um, champagne. <laughs> or champagne. She's bringing it back <laughs> on the map. <laughs> With like, champagne. Uh, Vouv. Um, <laughs> it Bo was. Bourgeois. No, I like Vouv. So it's were you favorite. drinking by yourself? Mainly? Oh, yeah. By yourself. Oh yeah. Okay. And did I'm, you have a did you have a certain cup that was like? <laughs> no, I'm being honest. No, are you ready for this? There's it's a ritual with every actor alcoholic. Are you ready for this? Tell us. It's this fucking coffee mug that says "Thank God I'm not dead," which is like the most ironic thing about all of it. And I was like, because it's like the biggest cup. Yeah. And then I had this other one that says "Fuck you, I'm fabulous," and then the biggest cups that could fit the most in, so I could get like two white claws or like half a bottle of champagne in each one of them. And I would go through that in like two minutes, like it'd be done. Like, I realized, like, there is something... You totally had to be sold. I thought you were having, like, a casual one drink a day. I no, yeah. <laughs> I was lying to you. Of course I was lying so to you. So is this the first you're hearing this? Yeah, this is the first time you're hearing all this. I thought she, like, was having a glass of wine or one drink. I that's not she, how it did start. I didn't know it was back to, like, bottles of champagne. No, that's how it started. Again, it was only one. 
Are you still going to the post office? Still paying full price for full postage stamps? Well, thanks to Stamps.com, you don't have to do that anymore. It saves me so much time. I use it myself. It's the best. I love Stamps.com. Is that what that little printer thingy is? Yep. Ah. Stamps.com brings the service of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It's a must-have for any business. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail. Anywhere you want to send it. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup and drop off. It is that simple. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There is no risk. And with my promo code Kelly, you get a special offer that includes a four week free trial, plus free postage and digital scales. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Kelly. That's stamps.com, promo code Kelly. Stamps.com. Never go to a post office again. Okay, so tell me the moment when you started to realize, oh, wait, this isn't quite like... like, The last podcast that we did here. That's when you had the moment. Oh, that's when I didn't give a fuck and I was drinking while we were doing it. And when did your mind start going... And Ethan was an enabler buying her white claw. Shut up. Leave Ethan alone. I made him do it. Um... (laughs) Um, I... That's at Ethan Miller. Is it Can Ethan you not Miller? do that to him? He's a comedian. We're promoting him. <laughs> but you know what these people, fans are like. They're going to be like, you enabled her. You made her So you, you let me, let, so let me understand. So you were drinking, you excessively the progressed. Sec- the second I started drinking at work, I was like, ooh, this is not good. This is not good at all. And then I kind of like pulled back a little bit. And then I went home and things started to kind of slow down a little bit and I was just waking up and drinking. I'm talking like waking up, didn't drink water, didn't drink coffee, waking up and drinking and I don't think I ate for like five days. Mm. And I looked across the table at my best friend because we were in Palm Springs together and another friend of mine who I got sober with and his future husband, and I did that whole same thing where I was like, oh, no, I can drink now normally. And they were like, oh, okay, yeah, right. And literally, the, the more I called them and I said, I need, I sent them a text message being like, look, I'm back in the program. I need you to hold me accountable. I'm so sorry for this weekend. Like, I'm back on track that this is not what I But what was the moment when you decided? Oh, the moment when I decided was I was at my boyfriend's house and he is in like this crazy like fitness thing right now. And everything is like health and fitness, Mm. no drinking. He doesn't even smoke weed. Focused, healthy, nutrition. Nutrition, like we were juicing, like making all our own meals, like all that kind of stuff. And I'm sat in the corner of his apart, uh, his house, sorry, eating pizza, nodding out because I'm so drunk. And he was doing burpees and he did a burpee. And as he got, was like lifting himself up from the burpee, he turned his head and he looked at me and I felt, he looked at me how I felt. And I was like, oh shit, like, no, nah, this is not good. Like, this is not good. And it filled me with shame and to finally be in a healthy relationship with somebody, I don't want to fuck that up because I'm an alcoholic. I don't want to, you know, sabotage. sabotage. Because the thing that Jeff and I said when we were going to do this, the (laughs) only thing, the only thing we have to do to succeed in life is don't drink and don't do drugs. Cut to one week later, he's on drugs. Three weeks later, I'm drinking. So it's like, we, we were like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, I don't want to be like this. And I literally, I didn't, I don't even think I told you yet. I think everyone else told you and you already knew what I was going to do because you saw it coming. I just know you so well. You know, and to, how I got, so I had leg surgery, Mike, right? And it was the, the really brutal, like all the skin was cut off, like crazy pain. Hold and on, I, rewind a bit just so people understand. Jeff and I lost a lot of weight. Jeff lost over 200 pounds. And when you lose 240. that much. 240. 240. And when you lose that much weight, you have extra skin. Yeah. So my whole body, the upper body is normal, but the legs were still like a 400 person, 400 pound mm. person legs. So I had that surgery. 
on the pills, the Which pain is pills. painful. No, no, it's it's, it's the most beyond. excruciating. Then I got an infection, Mike, in my leg, like where a nurse had to move in. So Kelly took care of me, stayed at my house for two weeks. When Kelly left, because she had to go do something, some of work, I got this infection the day she left. I didn't want to tell her because it was so bad. They, and like I was like, everything's great. And yeah. He's doing so much better. Little did I know he was in the hospital. Yeah. So it was really like it was like a, like two 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 and a half inch like gap in my leg where. They had to clean it out. It was oh. disgusting. It was horrible, horrific. But you know, I had to stay in the pain meds. So I, I kept taking the pain meds. Which ones? Um, I don't know, a lot. You don't know what pain meds you were taking. He was on Percocet. It was Perc? No, Vicodins too. No, it was Percocet. You weren't on Vicodins. I don't. I don't remember. It was a lot. I was so foggy. I don't remember weeks <laughs> of my life. Like literally, uh, two different antibiotics, two different pain meds. It was a lot. It was a tremendous amount. And then he was I on. I can tell you exactly what he was on. He was on Percocet, he was on Valium, and he was on an antibiotic. Two antibiotics. At first it was just one, and then you got the infection. And then yeah, you got but then you were gone. So yeah. you were like walking in slow motion, then you'd have bouts of oh, inspiration. No, 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 no. There was like no slow motion going on with, with him? anything. Yeah, he decided right. to go for a hike two days after his surgery. And then right, was can, can I finish telling the story to Mike? Cause I'm just can we get the end? Yes. We have a short period of time. Anyway, so long story short, I, I should have gotten off of them earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And I extended it. I kept taking it. So I was just, I was being lazy because, you know, you're in a zone with these things and like the pain, you don't want to deal with it and you don't want to deal with getting sober off of it and then have to get healthy. And, you know, this, like you're talking about taking a step back to, to go forward. And I didn't see Kelly for like three or four days and she comes over and she just brings it up to me. And this is what got me off of them. And she just goes, Jeff, you know, I, I never judge you. I never tell you what to do, but I just can't be around you when you're on these pills. Not that I, I don't, I'm not judging you. I just, mm. I want to take them myself. And, it was like and, really triggering. And she, the way she was so sad and like her face and everything, I was like, fuck, I'm not going to fuck up Kelly, my best friend, because I, I need to take pain pills. I shouldn't be on them. I should be on Tylenol at this point, you know, and then stop. And then a week before that, I got in a friend, I got in a fight with my other best friend, Jen, same kind of thing. I was in Vegas and I was on the pills and the whole thing. And I didn't, wasn't accountable to going to visit her when I promised I'd visit her and she, my best friend's wife. And they helped me get skinny also. And anyway, incredible people. And I got in a fight with them. I'm like, my two best friends are mad Fitness at me. Jen. Yes. Yes, Jen. finish it. Jen, Jen, Jen Burnett Rudolph. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, wow, if my two best friends are mad at me, then it's got to be me and not anything else. I gotta, it has to be these medicines. I'm not, I'm not acting like myself. And I just stopped everything that day. Hmm. But, yeah, thanks to Kelly. Well, you both got clean and both are, you know, um, in a much better spot. And it sounds like you both have helped each other. Always throughout do. this journey, you know, and somehow Mike Bear always makes his way back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't even know how. <laughs> if anyone knows anything about shaving your legs, that first shave after letting your leg hair grow for a while is always so satisfying. And I'm really picky when it comes to um, leg razors. Let me just tell you the Athena razor. I didn't want it to be good because it's really cute. So I was like, it can't be cute and work good. It's amazing. I have only now only have to shave my legs once a week because it gives such a close shave. And they sent me this box with all of these really cool products in. So now I'm not only using their leg razor, but I'm using their probiotics. I'm using their shaving cream, which is incredible. And their makeup wipes. So I have turned into a full Athena Club user just because they sent us the products for this podcast. It's insane, Jeff. This thing is so good. I'm telling you. I recommend every single person go out and get an Athena Club leg razor. It's like my new thing. Not quite sure about shaving the giny with it, though. But the armpits and the legs, it's my go-to. Show your skin you care with Athena Club razor kit. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use the promo code Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y. That's Athena Club, A-T-H-E-N-A-C-L-U-B.com. With promo code Kelly for 20% off. Trust me, it's the best leg razor ever. <laughs> so Mike, what advice can you give to families out there mm. that are going that have a loved one that mm. is ha whether it's mental health addiction an eating disorder se sex addiction whatever it may be mm. what advice do you have to families dealing with that well i think i think it's always helpful to have an outlet whenever you sit down with someone so the mistake i see often is people are really worried about someone 
and they want to have a conversation, but there's no solution. Mm -hmm. So basically you're just battling someone's ego. You're not even giving them because sometimes you have to plant the seed and then let them reach out again and go, okay, I do want help. So, you know, I think the first step is figuring out what's a good resource for them. Like, who should they actually reach out to? Is it a therapist? Is it someone from your church? Is it the sober dude who's the neighbor? Mm -hmm. Have someone that you've set up because if they say yes, fantastic, cool, I set this up for you. Mm -hmm. If they say not right now, at least you plant the seed. I also think it's important not to allow elephants to be in the room too long. Mm -hmm. uh, people will tend to do that because they get scared they don't want confrontation, they don't want arguing, they don't want to end up in like a battle of egos, but sometimes it's really helpful for the other person for the conversation to be had. And it doesn't mean, there's always a window. I mean, the, the downside of not talking to someone who's struggling, and we've seen it a lot in the last few years, is I've known a lot of people through acquaintances that have taken their own lives, a lot. Yeah, me too. And uh, I went on a podcast, um, gosh, three months ago with someone who had a mental health podcast. And he was a really good guy. And he took his own life two weeks ago and jumped off the uh, San Francisco, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge. Jeez. And it's not someone that you would think because every week he came out with a podcast about mental health. Yeah. But he was putting that out so that he could keep talking about it. And, and so you never, if you know someone who's struggling, <clears throat> it's the the risk of someone being mad at you versus potentially saving them from major consequences you know and it, it may be that a very small percent actually accept the help but it's worth it yeah you know you know another thing you taught me was a couple of years ago i came to you there was i'm very passionate for those that don't know me about um, helping people lose weight because I know it's it's the worst drug to me anyway it's the worst drug out of all the drugs mm. is food right and I was like Mike I'm taking dozens of meetings a month with people call or meeting them in person and I tell my whole story and they they're still fat or they're not listening or they're not doing anything to change or give them different avenues to change whether it's diet or surgery or whatever mm. and you told me you go it's because they're not in a group they need to they need to be in a group and there needs to be a group accountability, which will help helps people. It's not just you. You can't just tell me your story. It's just no one cares. That, <laughs> that, that's true. Yeah. That that's was gonna be my next question. For people who don't have an intervention had on mm -hmm. them, what in your eyes, I know what I would do because I'm like programmed to the brain, but what's the first step in making the change? With any change or getting sober? Or? Whether it's getting sober, getting help for eating disorder, whatever it is that you have. Well, I think the first step is some degree of humility that the person, all of us have to go through this where we realize we don't know what's best for ourselves or we don't know how to navigate. And so as soon as you realize you don't know how to navigate, then it becomes, well, who can help me navigate? Mm -hmm. And so... There's always wise counsel around us. Yeah. Like sometimes we think it's going to be, you know, it has to be someone famous that I need to go to. No, everybody has that wise person or that uncle or that person down the street. And people actually want to talk to you. I think people don't realize that when you ask for help or want to talk about what's going on, people love to feel like they're a part of your journey. Exactly. And that was the thing that took me so long to figure out because I hate asking for help. I feel like a failure because I couldn't do it by myself. But I don't believe recovery is a one-man journey. Mm -hmm. You do it for the one person, which is yourself. But the road to recovery, you meet the most incredible people you'll ever meet in your life mm -hmm. that are all going through the same thing that you're going through. And being able to share that vulnerability to me is the miracle, you know what I it mean? It is, and, and, and it gets in the way, sorry, Jeff, real no quick, worries. is terminal uniqueness. Thank you. I was terminally unique for a very long yeah. time. <laughs> and that's everyone, everyone that I've seen that really struggles to change, whether it's like lose weight or, you know, get with a fitness program or get sober, they struggle with this idea. That it that would be no, for them. Exactly. And not me. I'm not like them. That I would do that. Like, it's like the difference between... Um, for example, like 
I remember going into treatment, my first treatment, and I was sat there and like I'd pretty much learned everything at that point. And then there was this one girl that was really like disrespectful to the other girl. Well, she's a meth head. And I'm like, but you did coke. <laughs> it's like, what's the difference? A drug is a drug. I'm like, and then, well, he, he's a junkie. And I'm like, but you shot meth. So what's the difference? Mm-hmm. Like, whether it's heroin or meth, like, it's all like people have this whole idea. But then it was like another level of it. Well, I only took prescription pills. I didn't do what they did. And I'm like, you're just taking the legal form of what they're taking. Right. So you're. <laughs> That's how I used to yeah. tell myself. Well, the doctor prescribed it to right? me. Right. You know, so, it's like, fine. when I was sat there and there was this one woman who was in there for Adderall and another woman who was in there for meth. And they both were like, I'm better. The one on Adderall was like, I'm better than you because of blah, 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 blah. And I was like, Mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Just one is a pill and that you can get from a doctor. And the other is you get on the street. Like, it's the same thing. And if you read what Adderall is, it's methamphetamine salts. It's the same thing. Thing. Just the same as if you're going to be doing Oxycontin, it's the same as heroin. It's just people have this whole idea that because a doctor gave it to you that it's not as bad. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. Every, if you are in that treatment center, you are just the same as the person sat next to you. Yeah, and, and the sameness is loneliness, emotional pain, mm-hmm. wanting to numb out, not figuring out a way like how do I get out of this. We That's... That's the truth. The solution is just whatever drug you choose or snack. Yeah. I, did, but I, I can't talk in detail about it because of the uh, the, the NDA that was signed on both sides. But <laughs> about your intervention. <laughs> no, no, no. The uh, I've had to sign those too. No, no. So, so I was on a lot of weight loss medicine, like in two thousand, early two thousands, and I, I thought because a doctor gave me this medicine, and they would shoot me and they would give me pills i was like oh this is great i was on 13 different drugs and i was like i was a young kid then and i was like oh the mm. doctor gave it to me it's got to be fine no it's not it was i had a mental breakdown as a result i was a catalyst i cried every day for six months so sounds like you cry a lot he, though. Jeff, i'm a cry baby, a yeah. Yeah, he, he well cried that started i was i think i was 34 35 that was like the start i think before that i never cried once so cry baby. let's talk about solution where can people go for help like my number one place that I always do is I pick up the phone and I call AA head office, mm-hmm. you know, no matter where I am or I go online because there are meetings everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, Google's amazing. You got to be tricky with Google. Google's a bit tricky because you have a lot of these. Uh, unfortunately, the treatment industry is a bit dodgy. It is. Um, it really is. There's a yeah. few treatment centers that advertise on TV. And I will tell you this right now. Um, I sponsored a few people who went to the treatment center they always talk about on TV and they didn't so much as give her an AA book. So they didn't yeah. even give her a big book. So like it, they just, they're just bodies. They're body brokers. You have to really do your research when it comes to treatment centers. Right. And yeah, also you, if you, you get haven't... stuck in one of those cycles, they keep you there for 120 days if you have the money. Well, or if your insurance policy yeah. covers it. But it, it is helpful to look if you, have, if you have insurance. A lot of people don't do this actually is – check with your insurance provider who who covers me to get help in the area. Yeah. Um, asking that one sober person that you know in your life who somehow figured it out is another way of asking for help. Like that one person that you heard of that like goes to AA, mm-hmm. AA is free. It's you free. know, 12 step means are free. And you free. get free cookies and free coffee. I run, a, I run a free empowerment group. That's where I'm going right after this. We have like 400 people on Zoom. We do a different topic every week. I bring in speakers. Um, anyone can go to that. They can go to coachmikebear.com. And there's no upselling. It's just a free support group for anyone that has a desire to feel better. It's so incredible that you have created that space. It's so incredible what you have done. Thank you. Because I, I know a lot of people in your situation and you know who I'm talking about and what they do. And then it becomes all about them and making as much money as they can. And they forget that this all started for the love of mankind and just trying to make the world a better place and make people feel like they fit in. Imagine if all of the cleaning products in your home were all natural. Grove Collaborative is an online marketplace that delivers natural home beauty and personal care products directly to your door. Kel, you know, they make it as easy as possible for people to make the switch to natural products. Which is so important. I know. And they carry all those brands that I love that I get at all my holistic supermarkets like Mrs. Myers. They also have their own like best-selling in-house products called Grove Made Products. 
like uh, seedling tree free paper towels, the Grove laundry detergent dispensers. It very cuts green. 80% it's a very green of the waste, which I think is so important. Making the switch to natural products has never been easier. For a limited time, when our listeners go to grove.co slash Kelly, you will get to choose a free gift with your first order of $30 or more. But you have to use our special code. Go to grove.co slash Kelly. Get your exclusive offer. That's grove.co slash Kelly. I've seen this where I've had other coaches reach out to me and they, because I've worked with in entertainment quite a bit for many years and and there's this idea that they think it's incredibly sexy. And it wasn't until I, I've, I've been working with Dr. Phil for uh, two and a half years now or so. I love the people I get to work with on that show. Isn't it amazing? I used to do it too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I talked to Dr. Phil. I told him I was coming on your podcast. I was, I was shooting a show with him on Sunday. And he goes, Kelly's come as, uh, and helped some of our... And it, those people I love. Yeah. Like, I don't... I love... The, that's more fulfilling to me than... You know, star fucking. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> but, you know, that's where we all figure out, like, it's not about, it's about what f- fills our soul, right? And so there's, to my, there's always a way to ask for help. There's free community centers. Every city has them. And, and one thing that I want to remind everybody is this. Nothing that is broken can't be fixed. Mm. There's always, there's nothing that has ever broken in this world that with modern day technology couldn't be fixed. And that goes the same with you. Yeah. Like you, you have it within yourself. It is hard. It is not easy. It is so fucking hard. But the payoff Mm -hmm. is everything. And the other thing that I want to say as well is like go to, this was something that was really hard for me. And it's something that I did. As a woman, I stick with women Mm. in in the program because... Mm -hmm. I, I find it a little bit hard, I, women and gay men, I find it hard, and, and like the gay community, I find it harder to um, just understand the male alcoholic, straight male alcoholic brain. It's just different for me. Mm-hmm. I, we think differently. So I stick to women's meetings and I walked into a women's meeting and all I did was raise my hand and say, I, I didn't even use my real name. I, I, people in the <laughs> AA go by, they know me as Jones. Like right. I've, I've never used my, my real name because I think it takes the, um, like the, they'll always see me as Kelly Osborne if I say my name's Kelly. If I say my name's Jones, they just see me as someone else. Mm. So I sure. always, so, so in AA, they, they know me as Jones. But I raised my hand and I said, I'm scared. I don't know if I'm an alcoholic, but I need some help. Mm-hmm. And the amount of people that came up to me and there's one girl in particular whose name is Greta. And I know that she won't mind me saying this because she's my best friend. And to this day... We love Greta. Well, yeah, she's the best. We talk to her every single day. And she helped me so much. And now she's going through something that now I get to help her mm. with. She's suffering from cancer. So now, like, I... So it's like this. You meet these people that help you become human again and help you just realize that you are good enough Mm -hmm. and that's what's so important about having a group and a base like my home group is the best mike what do you recommend for people that want to lose weight because i know one of one of my passions over the next couple years is to set up a free group and help people Mm -hmm. lose weight and a lot of people dm me and i try to give them i have a little system i set up now or get people on the right track what what do you recommend is there anything out there because well i have i actually have another free group a food and wellness group that meets tomorrow at 4 p.m which is free too. So that's another big I got to come Zoom speak group. on it. I want to speak. They made diff- me get a Fitbit this week. I don't attend it because that's not like my drive, but it's like a coach Mike food and wellness group. Mm-hmm. And then I have a food and wellness Portuguese group, Brazilian group, but like it's just completely random. But like, I think it's intention. I think when you get down to it, when you say lose weight, there's so many different reasons why people want to lose weight. No, but like the biggest thing Kelly and I always say to everyone is the, like, what diet did you go on? How did you lose you all the weight? Diet. And I go, it wasn't, we didn't fix, it wasn't about the diet first. It was fixing your head. You know, it was meditating. It was therapy. It was that, that's what, once my head became normal, it was yeah. very easy for me to lose weight and continue to So are you weight. asking me, how do you build a community? 
No, I'm asking like just for the people. I don't have a community right now. I'm asking for like the people listening or fans and friends. Like what I don't it, like no disrespect or anything, but I don't really think feel like this is. Uh, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Your area of expertise. Mike knows What's everything. That? Losing uh, but, weight. Yeah. No, meaning like it's like because I always thought that you were more like uh, on the. Like food addiction isn't about losing weight. Mm -hmm. It's about having a healthy relationship with food. So that's it's different. No, I know it's different, but Mike just knows everything. He's one I don't know everything, but I do know community is is the way, the route to kind of accomplishing what you want. So I there's think some really great programs out there that a couple of my friends are doing. That like you know whether it be like Weight Watchers or whatever it is, but this new one that people are doing, I don't know much about it. I haven't done any research, but I've got about ten friends that are doing it, and it's because they have like the community mm -hmm. um, background on it, and it's like retrained, and they've lost like what was the guy who we were speaking to on um, at Two Fab did it, and he lost twenty five pounds. I don't remember. I think I think with the, what I find with food in general is there's such a range that like you have certain pockets of people where it's like it's all around their eating disordered or disordered eating and then you all have other pockets of people where it's like hyper nutrition focus non-gmo you know, like, yeah like like i think it's just figuring out what community you fit into and latching on to it i think if you've been doing it alone jeff like find a community i'll figure it out to be determined in the next podcast <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I literally cannot thank you enough for coming in today and imparting your wisdom. Thank on you. Us. I'd love for you to come back more. I would love to come back more. Drop just, by whenever. Just so that we can. And helping like, Kelly. I, I appreciate helping Kelly. I love that. And again, I'm so sorry. I was such a dick to you 12 years ago. No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, you know, that's that's the thing with um, uh, life, right, is. When you keep an open mind and you don't hold anything against people, you can actually develop a friendship and love and support. And let me tell you something, you guys. He had no reason to want, ever want to develop a friendship with me. I fucking But you know what? You know, the you. truth is, the truth is with, with you, Kelly, like, and I have this with almost everyone. I try to keep this, is there's nothing better than having a relationship with someone that couldn't stand me and hated me. Because I, I just love the ability in life that we're, we all are capable of changing yeah. and having different relationships. So for me, And it wasn't that that's I couldn't fun. stand you and hated you. I hated what you were trying to do to me. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. And, and, and like, but the reality is like, that's what we do. Like when we're in fight or flight mode, man, and we don't want to do, and someone's a threat. To, to what we want to do that day, we all I we all like, don't put up with it. Fuck that! I'm yeah. out. I am out. But at least you know now. If anyone's listening, if you ever want to pick a fight with me, I'm the wrong one because I'm crazy and crazy always wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for having me. I really thank appreciate you, Mike. it. Thanks, you seriously, thanks, are Coach the best. Mike Bear. Everyone, seriously, if you are ever stuck, please go to Coach Mike Bear on all his platforms. There is so much information. Read his books. I've read them. They're amazing. Again, thank you so much for listening. Tune in next week to the Kelly Osborne and Jeff Beecher Show. What you call freaks, we call family. Everyone is welcome. We love you. With all my projects, my number one mission is always just striving to be myself. And when you visit European Wax Center, you get the best of the best. European Wax Center certified wax specialists are expertly trained in preparing, protecting, and pampering your skin. Bikini waxing is their particular specialty. They do over 7.5 million bikinis a year. Jeffrey, are you going to be getting a bikini wax this summer? I mean, now that I have my new body, I probably should be, Kelly. Can I give you a bikini wax this summer? I'd love that. The secret to their signature comfort wax, and they say comfort wax because it really is a comfort wax. It's a proprietary blend of beeswax sourced from Europe and other skin soothing ingredients that allow for easy hair removal for a less painful experience. And let me tell you, it is so much less painful. European Wax Center is so confident you'll love their services. They're offering all first time guests their first wax free. How sick is that? That's exciting. Visit waxcenter.com and book your reservation today. Your first wax is free. You better hold my hand. This is scary, but I'm, I'm doing it. I can't hold your hand. <laughs>
Visit waxcenter.com and book your reservation today.